Hello, we're looking at polarity. I'm going to begin with three different crafty examples right here. So this is my first crafty example. I've drawn something that's linear or designed something linear right here. You can see I've got three atoms. You can tell that they're all the same atom. They're the same color, they're the same size-ish. They got a little squish trying to get them on here. And I put electrons in the middle. So we draw electrons as being on lines. Remember, this is always a problem whenever we try to draw things that are very small. We don't really get the picture right. So remember, electrons don't really like stay on a line. They actually are gonna be filling this space in between these molecules in like three dimensions and they're gonna be doing whatever they wanna do as fast as they can do it. So it's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's, this is not the perfect picture of what a bond looks like, but it's good for this demonstration. So at this point, since these are the same atoms, they have the same electronegativity, so there's no difference between them. So let's say they're 3.5 and 3.5, there's no difference. The electrons don't prefer one atom over the other. So it's you know perfectly fine to have the electrons on both of these kind of equally spaced, and so you can tell that there's not like one side the molecule that has a lot of electrons and one side that doesn't. That is an example of not being polar. This is nonpolar. All right, so I've got another example right here. So in this case, we have an atom in the middle. You can tell this atom is different because it's a different color and it's bigger. And then we've got an atom on either side. Now, they're the same size and they're the same color. So the atoms on the outside are going to be different electronegativities than these two, but they have the same as each other, right? So this is a stronger, but smaller atoms. They're gonna be um, more electronegative. They're close at the closer you get to fluorine on the periodic chart. So these atoms are going to pull on the electrons more. It's kind of like saying maybe this has an electronegativity value of four, and this has the 3.5. So there is a difference, and it's a valid difference, and so um, it's, you're going to be pulled by the electronegative atom. So these electrons, and remember, it's not on a line, but they're going to be sitting over here on this side. And again, it's still in this space, right? So think of it as like three dimensional. So it's still in this space, but now that density is over on that side of the atom. So this bond is polar because the electrons aren't sitting in the middle being completely, perfectly equally shared. So now we're going to look at this over here. And again, it's the same, the same deal. These two aren't the same atoms. And so the electrons are being pulled towards this outer atom. And so this bond is polar. Now, overall, this is the key part. Overall, this atom right here has electron density. This atom right here has electron density. And they actually are canceling each other out. It's not like one side of the molecule is all negative. One side's negative here and one side's negative here. So they cancel each other out. And so the molecule as a whole is nonpolar, even though the bonds are polar. Now I've got one more linear example. Now in this case, I've got three atoms. I've got my same central atom. I've got a little tiny atom. So this is the more electronegative atom here. And then I've got a big atom over here, but it's not the same atom. So in this case, we know the electrons are definitely going to be sitting over here by the electronegative atom. And again, they're moving. And in this case, on this side, these electrons are going to not be in the center, they're gonna be over a little, but it's not going to be over as much as these ones. So can you see how they're not evenly shared? So it means this side is more negative. Yeah, this side is a little negative, but this side is way more negative. And it's a partial negative, it's not a true negative, but this side definitely has negativity and it's more of it than this side over here has. So the electrons have to be like pulled equally for them to cancel. And since those aren't pulled equally, it's not canceling. And this molecule is polar as are the bonds. So let's just review. All the same atoms everywhere. The electrons are held right in the middle of both of them. And there's no, um, no side of the molecule that's more negative or positive. Same atoms on the outside. The electrons are pulled towards those atoms, but because the atoms are the same, there's, um, the they cancel each other out and the molecule is nonpolar, even though the bonds are polar. And then in this case, it'd be great if it was even a longer bond to see it. In this case, the atoms on the outside are different 
And so, yeah, they both pull, but this one pulls so much in this direction, it's not equally pulled on this direction. It's still a little close to him, but it's not, it's not as close as this one. So in this case, both of these bonds are polar and the molecule as a whole is polar. So you're kind of trying to see like where the weight, in a way, <laughs> the mass of the electrons are. And if they're not balanced on the molecule, it's polar.